trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be help to thy neighbor and marrow to thy bone. Hello and welcome to the show Steps to Leap Podcast. My name is Rochelle, a follower of Yahweh, a wife, a mother, author, and a three-time stroke survivor. My sickness tried to keep me down, but I just look up and leap. Why steps to leap? Let me break it down for you. Your steps are believing negative advice from others. Making timid moves, blocking your way to success, and not having confidence in God and yourself. Your leaps are having positive people around, making boss moves, striving to be successful, and most importantly, knowing whom will be with you and that you are awesome. So we will hear from some amazing guests and their amazing stories, testimonies, and journeys. Now we have Greg Graham here with us, and this is a little bio about him. On November 27, 2017, Greg Graham suffered a hemorrhagic stroke while driving his work truck in Kentucky, 300 miles away from where he lived with his then wife and two daughters in Atlanta, Georgia. The stroke was caused by an unbeknown arteriovenous malformation also known as a AVM. The AVM ruptured his cerebrum and left him with the following ailments. Diphasia, pneumonia, hypocephalus, mobility issues, and cognitive issues. After two months of arduous recovery with speech, occupational, and physical therapy. Greg left the hospital just well enough for his family to pick him up for their six-hour drive back home to Atlanta, Georgia. Wow. And today we have Greg with us. So welcome to the podcast, Greg. Thank you, Rochelle. Thank you for having me on today. I really appreciate it. You are most welcome. First question okay. to you, Greg. Give one word to describe Greg before everything that happened and one word to describe Greg after. The one word before, I would say fake. And the one p- word afterwards is awoken. Hmm. Very po- powerful words. Also, very powerful. Tell me a bit about Greg. What hobbies you have and what do you do for fun? Um, are we talking about now or are we talking about in the past? Give me a, a bit of all to. All it? Okay. So in the past, you know, I was a husband, family man, um, entrepreneur, had multiple businesses. And I was, like I said, fake. I wasn't living to the best of my abilities. I wasn't being the person that I wanted to be in life. I thought I was a good person, but I wasn't. I was fake. I was a liar. I was scared. Um, afterwards, 
when I noticed that life was a little bit more um, simple than what I was making it out to be, um, I stopped being scared. And once I stopped being scared, I stopped lying. You know, I started being truthful with myself. So what I like to do now is to talk to different stroke survivors, different people that have disabilities and bring their stories out. That's like how you do with this leap show, bring their stories out um, because I have a platform to do that. I know I have a, a gift from God um, to be able to talk to people in such a way that they are able to put out their stories. So that's my hobbies now. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you are very fulfilled in it. Thank you. So, okay. Can you explain the day that you had your AVN? Um, well, the AVN, the arterial venal malformation, I was conceived with it. The day that it actually ruptured is the bio that you was talking about. I was driving in my car, and all of a sudden, I was talking to my mother on the phone, her and her girlfriend. And I had an excruciating headache and it was so bad that I tried to drink water and nothing alleviated it. So my mother was praying for me on the phone, praying, praying, praying. It was so loud that my head was hurting me so bad. I tell her she had to stop. And at that moment, she told me to pull over and call 911. Um, at that time, someone already told me that I had a brain bleed before that survived. They told me what it was. So I'm like, oh, I'm having an aneurysm rupture. And I'm about to die. And I'm looking at this phone. I'm like, wow, my mother just told her baby to get off the phone. And this might be the last time she talks to her baby. Um, and she was in New York and I was in Kentucky. That's about 10 hours away from Atlanta. It was 12, so on, so on. So it was very rough that I had to go through that. Uh, I got airlifted to a hospital. Airlifted is helicopter lifted from one place to another. It was about an hour away from where I actually was. And it was fortunate. And all this is, you know, I, I believe in the higher power, higher being. Uh, my ancestors talking to me, supported me and things of that nature. And also God, at this particular time, I was just in the right location at the right time because the neurosurgeon that did the operation for me, the following week, he went on vacation. Yeah, okay. And I was, I had one of the best neurosurgeons in the Southeast of the United States. And then they transferred me back home. I had to do another operation. And he knew another neurosurgeon that was part of the Mayo Clinic in um, Cleveland, but actually had a practice in Atlanta that actually did my surgery for free. Oh, okay. Yeah. So all these things just lined up together that I didn't even plan. Yeah, so blessings of it. I, I blessings for you. Absolutely, absolutely. That what what made me realize, like, what am I afraid of? Why am I being fake? Why do I lie? I don't need to do any of this stuff because if I just follow my path of what I'm supposed to be doing, I'm going to be provided for. I'm going to be taken care of. It was no reason that I should be alive today. There's no reason that I should have um, the medical treatment that I have. I didn't plan it. This is what God, the universe, my ancestors set up for me. Mm -hmm. so that, everything was was set up so that you will be here for you will be here to encourage and you know inspire others. I mean, a lot of things happen to a lot of persons, and you will see that things won't line up as it line up for you, but everybody have a purpose and whatever happened to them, it could help someone in them, even if it's a small way, but it will help someone. Okay, mm -hmm. so how how was your rehab like? How, how was uh, rehabilitation for you? Uh, it was very difficult because at first my rehab happened in a place, Kentucky, like I, like you read in my bio, six hours away from my home. And they had to rehab me there. So I was able to, or strong enough to be transported uh, personally back to my house because an ambulance or a helicopter, it would have been very expensive to actually transport me there to there. So 
um, I had an issue with um, people telling me things. Uh, I would hear people say, oh, you look so good for a stroke survivor. You look like you're strong enough. So at this particular time, I, I, I had dephagia. That's a problem with eating and swallowing. And they put in the feeding tube through my nose. So I used to yank out the feeding tube out my nose. And once I did that a couple of times, you did that too, probably? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's normal. And they handcuffed me to the bed. The same with me, but my 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 at that point I was in insane. So I was taken so, out. Yeah, it's, 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 I guess it's a normal thing that we, <laughs> we we do as stroke survivors. But I was I was handcuffed to the bed and for 24 hours a day, this is what I was. I was just laying in the bed. And then when they would get me to rehab, I would go only rehab for an hour for physical therapy, hour for uh, occupational therapy, an hour for speech therapy. Then I'll get the hang up to my bed. So doing the therapy itself was easy for me, but just keeping the mentality up that I'm used to be staying in the bed for 24 hours a day. And then that's the only reason why I'm getting up to do the therapy. I had to make sure I did that each and every day because a lot of times people won't do it because mentally they're not stable enough. Um, I was mentally stable enough to say, I want to walk again. I want to um, eat again. I want to speak again. All these things motivated me because I wanted to get back home. So it was a blessing in disguise. I was so far away. I had nobody there. I was handcuffed every day. I wanted to get back home. So the, my mentality, my mindset, work, work, work. And it made it easier. I I wasn't mentally stable, um, say about to four weeks. So I was a uh, half full in the hospital. So I wasn't able to say, but I want to do this. But I wasn't able to talk anyway. So mm. I wasn't able to, to say that I want this or that. You know, I was a baby again. But I'm glad that at least you made a choice to say that you want to be well again fast and yes. you wanted to walk and do everything for yourself. So did yeah. they ever told you what caused you to have a um, brain bleed or have the stroke? Did they ever tell you? They had no clue. So I, I, like <clears throat> the AVM, arteriovenal malformation, is something that 1% of the world population has. And I was conceived with this thing inside of my head that it was going to rupture one day. Either I would die of some kind of stuff. It could be some car accident or anything could happen, or this would actually happen to me. Um, so when it ruptured, um, when I came to, my my neurosurgeon asked me, did someone hit you in the head? Did you have a car accident? Did anything happen to you? I'm like, no. So this was a, something that was going to happen. Is this I didn't have a clue about what was going on in my head. Mm. Wow. It's scary sometimes that we are walking around with things just waiting to happen, you know, but yeah, um, we still have the Lord to, to keep faith in and just to, to live because you cannot live in afraid of just to walk out of your house or to even laugh, you know? So, but it's still something to think about. These things can, could uh, happen and happen. Did your show affect your family in any way? Because you said you have two daughters. How did it affect the children especially? Um, well, I was married as well. Um, two daughters at the time, my daughters were 11 and 10, um, going on, uh, 12 and 11. So it was a very pinnacle time in their lives that this was happening, that one day they have a strong, able-bodied father. Then the next day they have someone they have to take care of. Um, that was a very difficult thing for any child to go through. So, um, and it was hard for me as a as a father to be a father and figuring out how to walk again. 
Um, that was very difficult for me because I felt like I was protective for them before and then I, I wasn't. So I had a lot of growing to actually do. And just, you know, I'm very grateful and um, looked after, highly favored, whatever you want to say it, that, you know, my daughters were able to, um, and, and I don't know really how much it is affecting them. I know it's affecting them a lot, but they were still able to be there for me to be part of my life, to, to grow with me. I, I can imagine there's a lot of anger, a lot of disappointment, but um, they're resilient. Yeah, and you'll be surprised. Children are even stronger than the, uh, the adults in some Absolutely. situations. And they bring us back to reality Absolutely. most of Absolutely. the time. Absolutely. So we thank the Lord for your children. And and how was your wife at that time? Um, so that goes back to my first part is about being fake. Um, at that time, I was just going through the motions of being with my wife because, like, okay, I have a wife. I'm supposed to be with my wife, but we was going on different paths. So instead of um, acting like this is what the person I'm going to be with for the rest of my life, once I almost died, I had to come to a realization like, you know, you're wasting your life. You're getting older. I'm getting older. And do you really want to be with me and take care of me? Do you really want this? I, I don't think you do. So let's separate and go our separate ways. So I, I left my wife at that particular time because all the time before we thought we was going to have tomorrow to fix it, to fix it, to fix it. Tomorrow never came. So instead of trying to just fix it, fix it, fix it, now you have to deal with a stroke survivor as a husband and we still have to fix our marriage. You don't really want to be here, so I'm going to let you go. Hmm. And I could understand it's, it's mostly when you go through something so major, it will make you really think about your life and how it was and how it's going to be. And you told yourself that, yeah, I will still be fake in your recovery. And that is another hurdle that you will have to overcome. So you just said, yeah, that is one burden that could can go. So I understand. I understand that. Okay. Um, sometimes, as I will say, um, when you have when persons have strokes, you lost, you lose some family, and you gain some family. Family, absolutely. It, it always happens. It always happens. Absolutely. We are going to talk a, a little bit about after after you had the stroke. Okay. Right, and and what you are doing now to to. In your recovery and helping others as well. What year did you t tell yourself in recovery that you're going to help others and just leap and go and help others? Mm, that's a great question. Um, I'm not necessarily sure if I actually came to that realization on my own. Um, like I said, a lot of things in my life just start aligning up um, mm -hmm. for me. Before my stroke, I would try to organize and orchestrate everything within my life. And then after my stroke, I realized that God has everything already aligned for me. All I have to do is shut up and listen and follow. Yeah. So once I started doing that, all these things that I am doing now, um, it's really not me. It's 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 just that I'm listening. So to, to answer okay. your question, all these people, I had people coming into my life that I didn't know before. It was telling me, Greg, you're not disabled. You're not inadequate. You're still a man. You can still do whatever you need to do. You just need to believe in yourself. So then I started getting that um, mindset of I can do these things, but not at the level that I was before because at the level I was at before was fake. I was not being real with myself. I, I was not being led 
by my higher power, my higher calling. I thought I can do everything on my own. And then when I and then when God humbled me that day, November 27, 2017, and I was supposed to die, and I didn't know I was going to die, I didn't know this was going to happen to me. He humbled me and said, Hey, I got you. You just need to shut up and follow my lead. And I got you. So after that, everything's just happening to me. I don't I don't ask for any of this. This is this comes. So um, I just learned how to be patient. Yeah. And the Lord said, this is for great. This assignment is for great. It's not, it's not for anyone else. It's for great. Absolutely. That is wonderful. It's wonderful. After having, because you say you used to work and everything, with the stroke now and, and having, and you're a different grade now. You're totally different. So did you think that before you made this leap and that and that leap is to do what the Lord told you to do? Did before that, did you think that something was missing from your life? Absolutely not. I thought everything was under control. I thought everything was in its right place. I had everything that I wanted. I had a wife, I had kids, I could travel the world anytime I wanted to. Um, I had multiple houses, multiple income streams, but one thing I didn't have was happiness. I, I didn't have a true self of, well, uh, of, of understanding of self. And once I got that, I have no house of my own, no vehicle of my own, um, uh, no wife of my own. Um, I have nothing now at this particular po moment of time in my life. And now I'm happy. I'm extremely happy. And I, I thought I was happy before, but now I'm I'm ex whew, I'm over the moon. I go places, I talk to people, and they automatically just talk with me and have genuine conversation. They open up their heart, they open up their feelings, they open up their life to me. And before people would not do that. They will just come with their mask. They'll they will, you know, go to you go to a social gathering and people will act like they are a certain way because they drinking alcohol or smoking weed or anything like that. And they just thinking that this, that they, they using that mask so they could go out to be who they are. What I'm telling you is when I talk to people now, no alcohol, no weed, they don't have anything with them. They are genuinely themselves. And that's a blessing that I'm actually in the presence of people that want to give their life to me their story to me. I'm like, wow, this is this is unbelievable. I am blessed yeah. to be fortunate enough to get that. So, yeah. That's Again, it. Your, that was your calling and sometimes we have to be not down to, to, and the Lord have to tell you, as I said, it happened to me. I had to be not down three times and the Lord Say, Rochelle, sit down. So the, the Lord told you, Greg, it's time to sit down and and just listen to me. So, yeah. That's it. it ha and it That's had it. to be you. Sometimes we say, why these things happen to me or you? But these things happen to who it is supposed to happen. Absolutely. So it had, it had <laughs> to happen to you. I I I am just feeling feeling so inspired because you are going so hard doing this uh, and I love seeing especially your giveaways at the end of the month and that is very inspiring to me. When did you when did you decide that you're going to start a show? Or try to en encourage others with with videos of other strokes and stroke survivors and brain injury survivors and and share it with the world. Maybe so like you would start that part. Like I said, all this happened because I didn't want to do it. You know, this is what God had put in front of me. I had this interview, just like I'm doing this interview now, I had this interview with this gentleman from um, Australia. His name is Julian Reddish. 
And he gave me, he wanted to interview me because I was doing these caregiver baskets. And when we did the interview, I, I just noticed, I'm like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I have this one, there's a, there's a couple of things that God didn't take away from me from my stroke. He didn't take away my looks. I'm a good looking man. I know that. And my voice, I have a great voice. So those two things I know are very um, uh, 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 pleasing to people on, on social media. So I use those particular tools that God has given me to talk to other people. So by that interview, at the end of it, I was like, you know what? I need to speak to more people and get their word out. There is people out there that have trouble speaking. They have people out there that are scared to speak because they have insecurities. And when they talk to me, they're like, oh, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to, to speak my words. Thank you for being patient with me because there's certain times I can't speak and you are patient with me. Okay, cool. I, that's the gift that God has given me. So I'm giving back because he gave to me. I'm not supposed to be here. So why am I going to be selfish with the gift that he has given me that he's, to that he's told me that I'm supposed to give back to the world? I'm giving it back. Yeah, that is so very true. You you knew that you would be a a per perfect fit for this this work. So I'm glad that you you recognize it and went for it. Absolutely. <laughs> Did you have any different ways of thinking? Uh, a lot of things, but the one the one the major thing that changed my life completely at that moment was this when my stroke happened and i thought i was going to die what happened to me was it was inexplainable unless you've been through this already but when this happened to me i'm on, I'm on the side of the road and i'm looking outside and it felt like i was transitioning the grass was greener the sky was bluer sound i wasn't hearing things it's like i was in a trance of going from this realm to another realm and i knew i was going to die and during that transition i started thinking about all the people in my life that would miss me i thought about my mother i just got off the phone with her. i'm like she's gonna be fine i thought about my father my family my ex-wife then i thought about my daughters i was like oh i can't leave this earth yet please i can't leave because there's a lot that i have to teach my daughters and the other thought that was that was lingering in my mind is like, oh, I'm about to die without truly knowing what being in love is. I was married at the time, but I didn't know what being in love was. So I was like, man, I'm about to die. So not feeling angry, not feeling sad or jealous or anger. None of that energy was there. But at this time, I turned to my right and I said, God, give me another chance. I need to help my daughters. I got some more things I have to tell them. And just like how you and I are talking right now, I heard, okay. So once that happened, I never prayed like that before and got a result and answer that quickly. So that changed my mind of how I'm supposed to be in this world with, with, with when I speak to God, how I'm supposed to believe in God. Because a couple of things happened after that. Um, I, I asked a 911 operator. I asked the, 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 the nurse surgeon. I asked... I asked the ambulance person, am I going to die? And they all said, I, I don't know. But I already had the answer. God told me that you're going to be fine. But I still doubt it. So then after that, I'm like, I had to think about that. And then I'm like, oh, God has already given me the answer. Why am I still asking man what God has already given me? All right. But once, I, once I got that in my head, my mind has completely changed of where I'm supposed to get my answers from and where I'm supposed to be believing. I truly started believing. Like before, I, you know, I used to go to church. I used to be a Christian. I used to be a pastor. I used to be a street minister. I did all that stuff. But I never had this kind of connection that I had before. And all that was fake. Now this is, this is way beyond anything I have seen before or believed in before. I stopped being fake, and I realized that I got to stop believing in man and listen to man for my answers and my results. God has already gave me my, my results, so now I know how to actually pray and get my answers. 
Hmm. Instead of just saying, okay, I talked to God. He gave me an answer and I'm not believing his answer. Now let me go to this man. Let me go to another man. Let me go to another man to confirm what God has already said to me. Why do I do that? Before I used to do that. Now I, I truly believe what God has said to me. Is it? Good enough. All right. It might and not look is... like it's going to be enough, but it's enough. Yeah. And that's how you're supposed to, to be. Go to God first. Not man. I don't I mean, go to man at all anymore. I don't go to man. I just go to God. He gives me the answer. I might not like it, but that's the answer, and that's it. Exactly. When you had the straw, what physical changes happen in your life, and what type of setbacks or trials that you encounter? Well, that that is a, a a tough question to answer. Because my physical problems are still my physical problems. I, I still have stiffness on the left side of my body. My hands feel like pins and needles. I have problems with vertigo. I have problems with balance. But what we've been talking about all this time, about this whole show about leap, um, I have learned to be more mental and spiritually than physically on this earth. Yeah. So I'm not really concerned and I don't really think about my deficits that much anymore. I, I don't use that as something to hold me back, as a crutch. Um, the new Gregory is so powerful, extremely powerful, and he knows what is actually behind him that's pushing him to be so powerful that all these physical elements as my issues are not my issues. Amen. Amen. Because they push you. They push me to be further, to be greater. To be great, you have to go through something. Absolutely. You have to have a little injury to say, I went through that. I have come through it. But I have a little injury, but you can grow from this injury. So, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. I had two choices, or I had two choices. I could have been either... Okay, woe is me. I, I'm hurt. I'm disabled and I can't do anything and I'm just going to stay in bed every day. Or I could get up and be the best I could do because God, he saved my life. Did he save my life to be just lay in bed every day and be mad and miserable? Or he saved my life because there's a purpose. I'd rather go with his purpose. So I'm going with that. I'm good. All right. Love it. Okay. Take some time and explain what your show is about, what we can learn from the show and how we can be a part of the show. Okay, so I, I, I do many things, but my main show that I have is called Death Taught Us How to Live. And I, I take different stroke survivors, TBI survivors, brain aneurysm survivors, heart attack survivors, anybody that had near-death experiences and... I interview them so they can tell their stories of how, like how you saying that leap, how they make that transition to actually live. Because, you know, everybody I had on my show said I was one way before and now I am this way and I want this to happen because I was wasting time before. And that's what it's all about, letting people have a voice because a lot of people don't have that voice. Like I said, I have people that have aphasia. I have people that have trouble speaking. And it is rough because you have people that had strokes that used to be doctors, lawyers, teachers, politicians, whatever. And now it's like their life is completely, like you said earlier, I was like a newborn baby. I had to start all over again. So a lot of people have started their life all over again and just giving them a half an hour, 40 minutes that they can actually speak and you don't rush them. Yeah. <sighs> That's the greatest gift for me that I could actually do that for someone else. So that's what that show is about. Death taught us how to live. And then um, different times of the year for Stroke Awareness Month in um, in May and AVM Awareness in October, I do different series about that particular thing. And I just have guests that are basically about stroke survivors, AVM survivors, or medical professionals that explain what those things are. And I could attack his show is very well formatted, and Thank he you. really 
take some time with you because when I had the interview with you on your show, I was not able to talk at this level. <laughs> I thank the Lord. No, I'm able to talk, although I'm still having a speech impediment, but I could talk now. But his show is very encouraging because when I watch it, I told Greg, yeah, I want to be on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was that. We had good. a great show. Yes, and it, it was a good show. Yes. You made the leap. How is your the show? Um, the show is it's going okay. Uh, I don't really, hmm, with my show, I don't really look at it as who I am. I, I just look at it as a, a tool to to uh, advocate for certain people and to bring awareness to certain type of diseases. Um, and that speaks for itself because um, when I first had my stroke, it wasn't a lot of people out there um, talking about what happened to me and what happened to them, and I, I, I felt lost. So the show itself makes up a community, and, you, and you're familiar with the community. It, there is people that support you, will speak to you, and um, will help build you up because they understand where you are. So that's what the show is at. Um, what do I want to happen for myself? Um, I, I don't know. I don't, like I said, I'm I'm truly, and it's weird because I, I truly listen to what God has for me. The universe, my ancestors, whatever the path they have for me, it happens. Like for instance, I moved back from Atlanta to New York. And in a two months time, I, I did two motivational speaks. I got an award. Um, I met yeah. the first AVM Very survivor in my life. But when I was in Georgia, I didn't know any of this was going to happen. Yeah. So as soon as I got here, these things happened. So to answer that question, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever, I'm fine with whatever the large sins, you are ready. I'm ready. You're Let's ready. go. Greg, you got to go here. Okay, let's go. Yeah. What's going to happen? I don't. You don't know yet, but you will have something happen to you. Okay. Well, I didn't think about outside of America. I just thought about, I know I don't want anybody else to go through what I went through. Mm -hmm. And by having that mentality, it permeated throughout the whole entire world. You know, I, I, I talked to you in Barbados. I talked to people in Australia. I talked to people in Europe. Um, I didn't ask for it. Is this? I just put this stuff out there, and God brought people to me, and and we had connections. So that that's what it's all about, you know. And it's not about, and, and it's it's weird because, and and you could probably say the same thing because you you understand this, but it's weird that we have this bond of all these different stroke survivors. Is like I, I have new brothers and sisters all over the world, and we understand each other. It's not that we was alone before when we had our stroke. It's just that we didn't have anybody else that understood what it meant to be a stroke survivor. And once you have that, it's a beautiful thing. So I want everybody that is a stroke survivor to have that same type of experience. I don't want them to have the experience that I have. Yeah. And yes, you always be, this community wants persons to really know about stroke. I mean, and come in some countries, is the second cause of death. And you do not hear anything about it, you know? Right. So, we, I I see, I'm so glad that I found this community because we all, everyone is doing a show about stroke or, or brain injuries and they have, to, they want to teach, they want to share, they want people to be Oh, we're so I love this community. Me too. And what I will ask, what do you get from doing all of this? Um, it's kind of selfish. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm dead serious. It's kind of selfish. I, I, and being a person that had had a stroke, being a person that. Um, used to be able to work, make a living, things of that nature, doing all these things for um, your family and friends and things of that nature. 
Um, now you know that you have certain skills, whatever those skills are. You might be an artist. You might be a, a musician. You might be a person that can speak well. You might be a person that can write well. And you know you have these skills. I'm just happy that I am able to use my skills. So that's what I get. I, it, it's not monetary. I, I don't get paid for anything I do. I, I probably could, but it, it's it's beyond that. It's it's knowing that I am get, I'm being a vital part of society when at at a time I thought that I was completely taken away from society and I was not vital anymore. I was worthless. Now I am not worthless. So it's it is it helps me with that way. And then also I get gratification when I come at the end of an interview. And someone says thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you for sharing my story. Yeah, that's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Well, yes, yes. I'm so glad that you are feeling feeling it, especially knowing that is. God ordained. Yeah, this is beautiful. We are winding down. Okay. And what what do you see for Greg and everything around you and things that you you are waiting to for God to tell you? Yes, you can leap into this. What do you see about for your life in five years? Um, very difficult question. Um, only thing that I could really think about, because I don't know what's in store for me and what God has for me, but I want to be able to, at the end of my life, when I'm on my deathbed, that I don't have to ask God, give me another chance because I haven't done what I need to do. That's what I'm looking forward to, doing all the things that I want to do that God has provided for me. I don't want to be in that position again, ever again. That is the worst feeling that you could possibly be in. Like, oh man, I haven't completed. I've been on this earth and I'm about to be taken off of this earth and I haven't completed what I wanted to do. I don't want that. Well, you are the first person that I ever, ever heard that answer from. That I don't want to die or be on your deathbed saying I need another chance. That was that that is so beautiful. And that is you're saying I'm going to do your work and then at the end you're going to be pleased. Oh that that is beautiful. And I I want that for you, Greg. And I, want I know that for everybody. Have, and I know that you have the determination to do it. So I know I will see. I will see or hear about Greg Graham doing something. And yeah, there's his little sister, yeah, that will be supporting. Because yeah, I know it will happen. So the last question. Okay. What legacy do you want to leave on this earth? On this earth, um, I, I don't I don't know because I don't think my my thoughts is that wide. Um, but the legacy I want to leave for my daughters is this. I want my daughters to grow up and date a man, and that man can't have any excuse to say, I can't do this, I can't get up, I can't do this. Like I want my daughters to be like, well, my dad had a stroke. He lost everything. And he still got up and did what he had to do. So what's your excuse? Mm-hmm. So my my I, I want to leave that for my daughters to be an example of what a man is supposed to be. Ah uh, yes, uh, again beautiful words, uh, a beautiful heart. So thank you so much, Gregory, for sharing with us and inspiring with your words and come from coming so far and just just helping people and. Adding to people's life. Thank you for sharing it on Steps to Leaps podcast. So right now, can you share your socials with us? I, I definitely can. You can find me on multiple platforms. On YouTube, I'm on uh, AVM 
superhero. Um, on Instagram, I'm AVM underscore superhero. And on TikTok, I'm AVM superhero. And you can see my speeches, my interviews, and also I do my caregiver baskets each and every month. I only do it in the United States. I, I get a caregiver that helps out a stroke survivor, a TBI survivor, or someone that had a brain bleed. And I give out free gifts to them each and every month because we have to take care of our caregivers as well. Very good. And I will put all of his socials and everything in the description on YouTube and in the show notes on all podcast services. You just heard Greg Graham and how he made his steps to leap with God and with his show. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope that later I can interview you when you got some awards. Okay. Don't be a stranger. I will not. To Absolutely not. Sex to Leap Podcast. Okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, sister. If you would like to be on the show or advertise your business services or channel, message me on Rosha's Blessing on Instagram or email steps to the 2022 at gmail.com. And you can follow this podcast on Rosha's Blessing on YouTube or any podcast streaming services. So until next time, be brave, be bold. I believe you can make steps to these. Blessings.